Hi everyone, I'm Kelsey. And I'm Christy. And Christy is a staff artist here at Wilburn Gourd Farm. And today she's going to show us how to create beautiful wood burning techniques with different wood burning pens. And to start off, she's going to show us how to do blade style work, um, I think with the knife, right? Yes. Right. So let me show you. I have two different pens here. And both of these pens are blade style pens. And what a blade style pen does, it's a pen that actually cuts through the surface of the gourd. Like, let me show you this image here. And you get your design transferred onto the gourd. So first, I will talk to you about, um, this is the... The knife. The knife, yes. yes. The knife pen. And this one is the arrowhead. But first, I want to talk to you about the knife and the way it works. So I'm going to go ahead and use stick and burn. And what stick and burn is, is a design transfer sheet. And I'm just going to use it to get my pattern onto the gourd. So I'm just cutting it. And so stick and burn um, comes in many different patterns. This particular pattern that she's working with is from the leaves, leaves, leaves stick and burn pack. Okay, so then I peel it off and I stick it right on the gourd and smooth it out. Now when I wood burn this, I'm just gonna wood burn the outline. I'm gonna ignore those little dots. They're there for de reference when you're shading. So I'm gonna turn on my burner and adjust my temperature. Okay, so let me see if this works. And then when I'm wood burning with this pen, like I said, it's going to cut through the surface. And it's really nice when you're doing um, nice, fine work and fine lines. So I like to go in, starting with the tip. Oop, that's a little too hot. Then I adjust it a little bit. So I go in. Oops, still a little too hot. And then again, every gourd is different. Uh, some have the, the shells a little drier so they burn you can burn differently depending on the shell of your board so you're not always set at the same temperature right which is why it's important to have an adjustable heat wood burner when you're wood burning on gourds because <clears throat> um, the shell density um, and the dryness varies just depending on the gourd itself <laughs> every gourd is different okay so I like to go in using the tip and then this is perfect for curves and then I like to use my pinky to, for balance, just stabilizes me and then I go in with the tip on the curves using the very tip of it and then straight down when I want to do those nice lines and then again bring it up at the tip. For the curves. And so the wood burner that she's using today is the Nibs Deluxe Dual Port Wood Burner. And it comes with two ports, so you can have two pens plugged in at the same time. And they all uh, it also has two dials, so they can be set at their own temperature. Now you can't use them at the same time, um, just for safety reasons, but you can have two different pens plugged in and set at their own temperatures at the same time, which is what Christy is going to be doing uh, today. And she'll show you how beneficial it is to have them set at their own temperature so you're not constantly going back and forth and readjusting your temperature. <laughs> okay, so I'm just finishing off my leaf design. And then it's always nice to move your gourd around if you need to, just so you're comfortable when you're burning. Okay, now for the veins on the leaf. Like I said, um, on this particular pen, it's nice when you just use the side of it and just go straight in for that nice line. Okay, 
So now that I have my pattern wood burn, I'm going to turn it off. And then I just peel off the sticker burn so it just peels off. And now you can see how nice you can get that design transferred onto the gourd using the knife pen. Okay, so next I'm gonna talk about the arrowhead. So this is the arrowhead. It's really nice and sharp. So let me get a sample piece here. So um, you wanna use the arrowhead when you have a very um, intricate design. It's just easier because of the nice uh, fine tip so on this particular design, I did use the arrowhead, and when you're using it, you want to use the very uh, tip of it, like I said. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. Just turn this on. Let's see, I'm like, let me play with my temperature here. Okay. Okay, so. I'm gonna go ahead and use the very tip of it when I burn. So I'm gonna draw a little star. And I just want you to see how easy it is. You, I'm just using the tip. And it's very nice when you're doing very small designs. It can be a little bit difficult if I was actually using my knife pen to do something that's so sharp and so detailed like that little star. But you can also do like, let's say if you want to do a line, you can, but you would just go in again with the tip and just keep going straight, 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 even pressure and let the pen do the work and always adjust your temperature as needed. Okay, so now what I want to show you with this pen, you can also use it to create little dots like on this sample here. I did the pointillism on this leaf. I don't know if you can see it um, using this pen. So if you turn it on its side and use, the, use it at an angle, you can create dots. So there we go. So Are you going to show us in the leaf? Yep. So now I'm going to show you on the leaf. So then I'm just randomly applying dots on the leaf. And you want them. So when you're shading with it, you want to have more dots. When you're doing pointillism, you want to have more dots um, closer and in the area that you want darker. So you add more dots in that particular area. So it's not that they're necessarily larger, it's just there's more in there's, that area. Yes, there's more in that area and then you gradually fade it out. So that's how you get that cool shading effect. So you just did some dots around uh, next to the center vein of the leaf. And then now you're just working your way out, correct? Yep, I'm just working my way out. And like I said, you want to add more where you want it darker and just less where you want that um, design to fade out. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but you can, it, it's the design, uh, the little, um, it's starting to show a little bit more, I think. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, and also, another cool thing about this pen, since it's so fine, you can also use it on its side to shade. Now, what I mean by shading is um, you're burning on the surface of the gourd. It's not cutting through. So on its side, like this acorn right here, I'm going to draw the design, a little design on it. So I'm just going ahead using the side of it 
And then when you're shading, it's always best to take your time and work slowly. So you see how you get that little design on the acorn. And you can also, again, if you want to do some little shading right there on the tip, you can. You're just like scribbling and fading it out. So it's a really nice pen for those many purposes. So it's a really fun tip if you want to use this one. <laughs> a lot of uses for that yes. one. So, okay. So now I want to show you um, uh, two different shaders. So the first shader that she's going to use is the writing pen. And that's the pen that we showed you how to use last week to get this beautiful basket weave design. Um, she showed you actually how to do the larger basket weave. And we have uh, the stick and burn pack with leather tooling and class classic leather tooling and basket weave has a larger design right here and a smaller design. And um, she showed you how to do that last week with the writing pen. So make sure if you didn't watch it, you go to our Facebook page and you like us so you can be notified when we have these videos. And it's still there for you to watch. Um, we just had it last Wednesday, which was the day before Thanksgiving. So, all right. Okay, so now, um, well, first let me show you the two different pens. This is the writing pen and this is the spoon shader. So again, what a shader does, it's, a, it's um, a pen that burns on the surface of the gourd and you get this really nice uh, shading. So I'm going to first show you the writing pen. Okay, and when you're shading and actually burning in general, it's always best to start at a lower temperature and then adjust your temperature as needed. The reason I say this is because um, like it happened earlier, if I start burning really heavy, there's a, pro pro a possibility that I just ruin my design. So it's always best to just keep adjusting it as you need it. So, okay, let me test it out now. Okay, so when you're using this pen, it's like using a pencil. So you're just scribbling in the area that you want shaded. Let me adjust it a little. And if you want an area darker, you don't necessarily have to go up on your temperature. But in this case, I'm a little too low. So let me just adjust that real quick. Um, and the reason I say that is because if you go too hot on your on your burner, you can actually, um, it can actually indent, give you, yes, an indentation and it's not going to look pretty. So you want it to just look nice and fagely graded out. So the way you do that, you just, if you want it darker on one area, you just keep scribbling on that particular area until it gets darker. And then you just fade it out. So I wanna go darker on this area. I just keep shading that same, same area. And when you're shading, like I said, you just take your time. Yeah, like last week, you said it's very peaceful. <laughs> yes, you have to be patient. Take your time. You can't really rush it. So do you have any techniques on like, or tips on how they should shade? Right now you're shading a leaf and you're starting towards the center. Well, usually your when I out. do any shading or even coloring on gourds, I always like to reference a real picture and I actually go from there. Okay. But on this case, I'm just randomly just shading so you guys can just see the way the pens work. But I do want to show you that, um, on this leaf right here, I did do the pointillism with um, that um, arrowhead pen. Yes, and on the center one, it does have a little pointillism at the bottom, but I did use my um, writing pen. And on this last leaf, 
I use the spoon shader so you can see the difference between the two, how the writing pen looks compared to the, the, the spoon that I'll show you later. Yes. Now, another cool thing you can do, I don't know if you can see that it's starting to, you can actually see that, it, you can see that little shading right there. Um, another cool thing you can do with this pen, you can also uh, make little dots if you want to. So let me just go down a little bit. So when you're using it, you go straight down and then you twist and you can get those little nice dots on your gourd. So you could do pointillism with the writing pen As or well. with the arrowhead. Mm -hmm. And then you can do the same technique also with the arrowhead pen. I didn't show you earlier, but if you want to make um, more like texture dots, you can do it. Again, it's the same concept. Don't go too hot on your burner because you don't want to pierce it all the way through, but you just want to go straight on and twist, and that's how you get those little dots in there. So it's another option also with the arrowhead pen. All right. Okay, so, oh, and another thing. If you have one of these nibs burner, they do come with um, the little pen holders. When you're putting your pen in, um, you just go in and you twist for that nice, Nug fit. So, okay, on the spoon. They have a nice, a nice extra cushiony foam grip. <laughs> yes, which is really nice because your fingers re rest really nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to switch to this pen. Okay, so a spoon shader, when you're using a spoon shader, you want to use a spoon shader when you're um, going to do a lot of shading. It's much faster. In a larger area, yes, right? in a larger area. So, for example, on this piece, um, if I was doing it all over again, I would use a spoon shader on these areas that are larger and I have, um, they're shaded completely. And the writing pen for the small little details on it, like right here, this is really nice and fine. Of course, I would use the writing pen for that. So, let's see. So, I'm just using it at an angle. And I'm also scribbling. So let me just turn it up a little. There we go. Might be a little too hot. And so you're just using the bottom of the spoon. The, yes. The, f the bottom of the spoon, and it's the same concept. You're, you're just scribbling. And if you want it darker on one area, you just keep going over that area. And you just fade it out. But it's much faster to shade with a spoon shader. So that's when it's nice. If you have a large area you want to shade, that's when you want to use your spoon shader and your writing pen for like finer details. So you can see right now that I did that shading pretty fast. Yeah, much faster than the other one. Yes. <laughs> the other one you need to take your time, but this is coming along nicely. Now, if you need to get to um, to like the very edge of your design, you wanna use the very um, tip of it. So that's how you just go in using the tip like that, like at an angle, right at the edge. And then again, I use the bottom mm -hmm. and just shade it out. And that's the way you use your spoon shader. Now, you guys can see that. Again, I did that sample with the spoon shader. Okay. I do want to show you one last thing with the writing pen. Because the writing pen is so much fun. <laughs> yes, it is. I love it. Let me see. Let me use this one. Okay. So I just, the good thing about having this burner, I just switch it and I can use my writing pen again. I don't have to unplug it and plug it back in. So let's see. This is the reason it's called a writing pen because you can actually write with it. So let me see. Let's see. So I always, like I said, I like to have my temperature low. And 
Low and slow. Yep, even pressure, even speed. And you're using it to write. I don't want to go too hot because then you get those little indentations. So when you're writing with it, you have to make sure you're using it on its side, not straight down, so it comes out really nice and smooth. There you go. So you can actually write with it. So like I said, it just takes some time and it's perfect when you're signing the bottom of your gourd. So that's the pen you want to use. All right. Well, I think that's all we have for today. So thank you for joining us. And if you like this video, make sure you like it. Share it on your wall so that you can uh, reference these techniques later. And like us on Facebook so you get notified when we have new live videos like, these, like this video here. So you can learn lots of different ways to wood burn on your gourd. Um, we like to show all different kinds of things like how to color your gourd. Just fun, fun things to do to create amazing gourd art. So thank you for joining us.